I believe in my neighbour, my fellow man, meeting up and struggling to understand our lives as best we can. Jimmy's Hall is a film that's set in Ireland in 1932. It's about a man called Jimmy Grelton, who came back from the States uh, in the early 20s, actually, and uh, established a dance hall outside the jurisdiction of the church on a plot of his own land with his friends and comrades. Paul Lavitt has got an old friend from Nicaragua, uh, Donald O'Kelly, and Donald was doing a f stage show about Jimmy Grelton. Told Paul Laverty about it, um, the story of Jimmy. He uh, had a dance hall with his friends, um, not sanctified but authorised by the church, um, and the church took against it and the landed interests opposed it because it was a place of free ideas and attempted to close it. Um, Paul was intrigued by the story. We talked, he mentioned it to me, we talked about it, and it seemed to bring together a whole group of ideas that we'd been rattling around with for some time. So we, we just thought, well, we'll have a go at it. The hall is a safe space where we can think, talk, learn, listen and laugh and dance. It brings out the best in us. Don't be frightened. We shot for seven weeks in uh, County Leitrim. And, um, I mean, it's a fantastic landscape. Early mornings, late nights, of course, as filming always is. Um, but um, a brilliant community around that, that, that knew a little of Jimmy Grelton, but not a lot. And um, that just brought the story to life for us. Come on. Come on, man. Are you who I think you are? Are you Jimmy Grelton? And who wants to know? It was a time uh, very similar to now, when there'd been a big financial crash, the Wall Street crash of 29. Um, it had led to desperation and poverty and um, great suffering, um, mass unemployment and um, deprivation. Um, what sub services they were were cut. Um, and the working class paid paid the price, not the bankers. What's new? But it, it was also a time when when the trade unions had been diminished in our country after the general strike in '26, when labour leaders cooperated with the right wing. There's lots of similarities, really, and and the need to assert the interests of working class people it, it was very strong then, and it's very strong now. If you or your Earl or anyone lays a hand on this family, you'll get what's coming to you, do you hear me? You're to leave these people in peace in their own home. Jimmy Carlton is, is the centre of the film. And he was many things. He, he was um, a working class man. He'd, from farming stock, but um, peasant farmer, but... Um, He'd done all the manual trades, been dock worker, building worker, been in the army. So, I mean, he'd, uh, he'd knocked around as a working man, um, but he was also political. And, uh, I mean, this was the time of the struggle for independence by the Irish. It was the time of the Russian Revolution. It was the time of James Connolly and Jim Larkin, you know, great heroes of the Irish labor movement. Um, so, so political ideas were current and the language of politics was very current. And, and Jim, Jimmy Grelton was an organiser um, for trade unions as well as, as well as working. So he was many things, but also a man of, of some breadth, of some humanity. Jimmy, did you ever go to a jazz club when you were over in Harlow? I did, I. Did the Savoy you? Ballroom. Aye. Grand musicians. The only place in the United States where black and white dance together in peace. Really? Uh, Marvellous. Obviously, we wanted to be true to the historical record. So the position we reached was that the, 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 everything that we know about Jimmy is in there. Um, and the, the public events, as it were, are, are true, as, as accurate as we could present them. But nothing was known of his private life. And yet a man of such warmth and generosity, as well as his politics, would have had a private life. And to, to present a rounded character, you, you had to explore that. 
I've had a few good comrades over in New York and help me find work. What if I asked you to come with me, Una? What if my mother wasn't fading? What if I wasn't the only daughter? What if my dad wouldn't fall apart? What if I wasn't so trapped, Jimmy? What if, Una? The real priests were... When you read about them, they're quite two-dimensional in, in the kind of preaching um, fire and brimstone sermons and, um, um, and the taking part in the anti-jazz campaign and, and uh, the very, very uh, two-dimensional characters. Paul thought, and I agreed with him, that we had to have more complex characters so that the, the, main, the main priest, the senior priest, Father Sheridan, the Jim Norton plays, is, um, is absolutely committed to the, to the Catholic Church's line of opposing anything that was outside its jurisdiction by way of education or classes or dancing or whatever. Um, and, uh, I mean, he takes a very, um, a very firm view on that. Jazz music. Rhythms from darkest Africa that inflame the passions. Pelvic thrusts and salacious body grappling instead of the elegance and beauty of our own Irish dances. Then he recognizes that, that Jimmy Grelton has characteristics that, um, as he said, were like the early martyrs, you know, the ones that founded the church, that went, went into hostile territory and stood on principle, um, were brave and intelligent and committed. So he recognizes that in Jimmy. And, and he also has a curiosity about what is this music that he's missing out on? And maybe there's something in it, and, but he, he, he can't let that uh, interfere with his politics. But nevertheless, he's intrigued by it and, and, and has a respect for his opponent. Oh, you are a believer, Jimmy. Yes, you are. And part of me holds you in very high esteem. So yes, I will come along and listen to you and your trustees. Once you have brought me the title deeds to the hall and have them transferred over to Holy Mother Church. Free expression is, is liberating, but it's also subversive. And, um, and if, if you have, if, for example, dancing is um, pleasing and invigorating and liberating, then you question the authority of those who say you can't do it and it's sinful. I mean, we can all think of places in the world where that's happening now. Um, if education is beyond the control of the church and yet people are strengthened and ennobled by education, um, you question the authority of those who say, no, we have to control it. So the ideas are very, are very current, really. And it's, it's the struggle for consciousness, it's the struggle for control and authority, and it's a struggle against that. It's a struggle to ask the big questions, to challenge authority in the interests of a better life, in the interests of solidarity, of living together, of mutual respect, of making the best of, of what we are. Come in, Father. You're welcome. Gralton, you come out. It's Mr. Gralton to you, Sheridan. Who in the hell do you think you are, running classes in my parish without my permission? No permission required. That's the point. We built it ourselves. Education is the exclusive reserve of Holy Mother Church, not semi-illiterates. Don't patronise me. Jimmy Grelton's a, a figure not much, not so well known in Ireland, but when, interestingly, when Paul tried to go back to the historical record and um, the official documents and find out about him, about why he was, at one point, had to leave the country, um, the documents had amazingly disappeared. And... Um, so people are still, after 80 years, are still feeling that this is uh, something that doesn't reflect too well on, on the Irish government and the Irish state, as indeed it doesn't. But the, 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 the British have even more to feel bad about before we feel too uh, complacent. We need to take control of our lives again, to live and to celebrate to dance as free human beings.